All right. All praises to the most high, uh, brothers. Thank you for having us. Uh, thank you for um, being here today. And um, my name is Deacon Isaac of Israel United in Christ. Uh, we are a faith-based organization who uh, our job, our sole purpose is to travel throughout the diaspora and teach our brothers and sisters who they are according to the Bible, um, also known as the Tanakh. Uh, we use both Old Testament and New Testament scriptures. Um, our Messiah, um, Jesus the Christ, who the world calls Jesus the Christ, um, uh, son, son of David, commanded us to go throughout the four corners of the earth to wake up the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And we use the uh, Tanakh to do that. Uh, that's why he said in the book, he comes low, he comes in the volume of the whole book. Um, and I do appreciate you brothers for taking the opportunity to meet with us today. Um, so our understanding is that um, our people in the diaspora who are in uh, mainly on the continent of Africa, who are in Nigeria, whether they be of Igbo descent or Yoruba descent, you are the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And um, you are the Jews, you are the real Jews, according to the Bible. And the reason I'm stating it like that, brothers, the reason I'm saying you are the real Jews with an emphasis on real is because there is a fake Jew on this earth. And um, I have to speak clearly to you, brothers, to make sure you guys understand. Um, one thing about our organization, we don't we don't sugarcoat stuff and we don't tell lies. But they have been a nation on this earth which has been telling us lies. And those are the fake Jews that you see today in our land of Israel. Um, I want to open up with some scriptures and... Um, if you have any questions, brothers, please feel free. Oh, what, what is your name? Uh, the brother in the middle in the yellow. What is your name? Okay, my name, my name is Joel. Joel. Okay, yes. and the brother, uh, the Joel's left with the orange and grayish shirt. What's your name? My name is Ifechuku. Oh, oh if Ifechua? Ifechuku, Ifechuku. Ifechuku, Ifechuku. Okay, and my brother to the right. Okay. All right. Good. All right. All praises. Thank you, brothers. Um, please don't let the accent uh throw you off my American accent. I am your brother. Uh, we were stolen from the continent of Africa and brought here on cargo slave ships uh, because we broke God's laws. We broke God's Torah. We broke his commandments. And as a, as a direct result, we are here in slavery today. Um, I want to open up with Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. I want to open up with the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. Um, you brothers are very familiar with this book. This is one of the uh, first five books of, of Moshe, Moses. Okay, let's read it. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. Mm -hmm. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. So God calls us a holy people unto him. Go ahead. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, mm -hmm. above all people that no, are upon. equal to. Above Un all people. Under. Above mm -hmm. all people that are upon the face of the earth. So God chosen us to be a special people above all people, Joel, um, meaning all nations. Why? Because God took us, he separated us as his nation, and he gave us his Torah. He gave us his Torah to live by, which are his moral laws, his civil, ceremonial, uh, and so forth. He gave us the Bible to live by, to um, to uh, ordain and to direct our lives. And we broke God's laws. Therefore, we went into slavery. Get me, stay in that book. Get me Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. So what I'm going to we're going to go through some scriptures and Joel and my other brothers. I want you to basically see who these scriptures fit as far as curses, because God told us in these last days, you would be able to open up the Tanakh, read it and see who it fits. Does this fit the people in the land today calling themselves Jews 
or does it fit our brothers and sisters who are on the continent of Africa and our brothers and sisters who were taken from the continent of Africa? Let's get Moses, Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, mm -hmm. that all these curses, all these blessings, curses. So now we're going to look at the curses, Joel. All of these curses, go ahead shall come upon thee mm -hmm. and overtake thee read jump to verse 32 verse 32 uh-huh thy sons and thy daughters now joel listen to this it says thy sons and thy daughters moses is speaking to the israelites remember we just left africa i mean not africa we just left egypt going into the land of canaan egypt is in northeast africa joel you know that egypt yeah, sure. the original egyptians what color were the original egyptians blacks black what was moses in egypt moses was second to pharaoh moses was said he was able to be brought up as an egyptian so right there there should be no confusion right there you should know that moses is black but the people in the land today joel who have set up who have gone throughout africa and set up different synagogues and have people following their their customs meaning the talmud really because they don't follow the Tanakh. They follow the Talmud. Okay? They say that they are Judah. They say that they are Benjamin. They say that they are Levi. They say that they are the Jews. But Moses was from the tribe of Levi. And you and I know that Moses is a black man. Okay? Moses told us, your sons and daughters shall be what? Given unto another people. Joel, whose sons and daughters? Process of elimination, Joel. Whose sons and daughters? was given unto another people. The sons and daughters of the Israelites. The sons and the daughters of Israel. Yes. Now remember, this is future prophecy. Moses yeah, says, so. your sons and daughters shall be given unto another people. Read on. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Go ahead. And there shall be no might in thine hand. We had no might in our hands, no spiritual, economical, or military might to redeem our children. Who did this happen to throughout history? Joel, who did this throughout happen to? Majorly Africans. Exactly. Exactly. Only Africans. Only our people was given unto another people, meaning another what? Another race of people. We don't have any economic might, military might or spiritual might to redeem our children, okay? Your brothers and sisters are still held captive here in America. Our brothers and sisters on the continent of Africa are still colonized to this day. That's why you have Mali, Burkina Faso, all these other places trying to kick the French out, trying to kick the British out, trying to kick the Portuguese out. These curses only fall upon us. Read verse 33. The fruit of thy land. Now watch this, Joel. The fruit of your land. Go ahead. And all thy labors. And all your labors, Joel. Come on. Shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. You hear this, Joel? The Bible saying the fruit of your land and the fruit of all your labors shall a nation which you don't know eat up. Read on. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. And Joel, you shall only be oppressed and crushed always. This is more than cassava. Every time we hear the fruit of the land, we mostly think about food that we can eat. This is more than fruits, uh, breadfruit, cassava, apples, bananas. This is going into your resources like your cobalt, your gold, your silver, your diamonds. God says the fruit of your land you're not going to enjoy. This is currently going on in the continent of Africa today, in the Congo, in Nigeria, in various places where the Israelites are scattered. Jump all the way to verse 47. Verse 47. Mm -hmm. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God. Why did this happen, Joel? Read it again for Joel. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God mm -hmm. with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. But we didn't serve God. We didn't serve Torah. We didn't keep the Torah for joyfulness of heart. Nowadays, what do we keep, Joel? You got Christmas, Easter, all these, uh, uh, our brothers and sisters in Islam, all these modern day Christian holidays. That the white man gave us these are the things we keep which is not of god because it's not biblical okay read on come on for the abundance of all things for the abundance of all things go ahead therefore 
Shalt thou serve thine enemies? You hear that, Joel? God said we we're going to serve our enemies. This didn't happen to the Jewish man, Joel. This is did not happen to the Jewish man. And we know the white man is going throughout all throughout Nigeria, um, mm -hmm. all throughout South Africa, where you have, let's say, you have the Igbo, you have the Lemba, you have all these different tribes who know that they are the biblical Israelites, but they are still following the customs of the white man. They're following the white man's version of the Bible of the Tanakh. And the only reason they're following it is because these white people are funding many of these synagogues. Okay, so they are leading you right back to Satan. So we left one devil to run into the hands of another devil. Meanwhile, we are the true Jews. They should be following us. We follow their customs, Joel. Okay, the phylacteries on the head. Okay, guess what? Even the star. And I know that's a very touchy subject for our brothers, but even the star, all throughout the Torah, you never read about the a star of David, which they say is the Magin David. You don't read about that, okay? But you do hear about a seal of Solomon, okay? You do read about the star of Rimfam, okay? You read about that. Also, in our following of of Talmudism, because that's what it is, they tell you that Yeshua ben Yosef ben David is not the Mashiach, okay? And the Mashiach is yet to come, and the Mashiach is going to be white. Meanwhile, we're reading the Bible that Moses was black. Look at this. Where do we get this? I don't know. Joel, I don't know if you can see the screen like I can. Where do we get yeah, sure. Where do we get them? Where do we? Where do they come from? You're going to find out they are the sons of Esau, E-S-A-U. They're the descendants of Esau. They are not the Jews, jo um, Joel. They are not the Jews. We have to stop following the customs. The Bible is a black book. Everything in the Bible happened on the continent of Africa, Joel. What is wrong with our people? Even in America, they're running around. Oh, blessed. Oh, bless you, white man. Bless you. You are the Jews. No, 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 no. The Jews are you and I. God said we would go into slavery. Read that. Come on. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. You hear that, Joel? We're going to serve our enemies. Go ahead. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Come on. In hunger. Uh-huh. And in thirst. Come on. And in nakedness. Read. And in want of all things. Whatever we want, we got to go to our enemies. Read on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Joel, our enemies put a yoke of iron on our neck. Joel, when did that happen to the white man in Israel? calling himself a Jew. Throughout history, think, Joel, when did they go on slavery on ships, sold to their enemies, had to serve their enemies in food, water, and, and clothing, nakedness, have yokes of iron on their necks? When did that happen? It's no, nowhere no. in history. It's nowhere. But every year they teach you about a Holocaust in Germany portrayed by other white people but they never speak about our Holocaust. When you and I mention our Holocaust, you know what they tell you? Shh, forget about it. That happened hundreds of years ago. Get over it. No, it's biblical history. It happened yesterday. It could happen. It's still happening today. Our brothers and sisters in Libya, amongst all these Arab countries, they go there to work, and then what happens to them? They're taken into slavery. It's still happening to our people today. Our brothers and sisters on the continent of Africa still colonized today. So through the process of elimination, Joel, you can see that these people who our people are following in many of these synagogues set up on the continent of Africa, those are not the biblical descendants of the Jews. Those are imposters. Yeshua Ben Joseph, Ben David calls them the synagogue of Satan. That's what the Bible calls them. And it's a blasphemy. Get me that in Ezekiel. It's a blasphemy for you and I to reverence them as the real Jews. A lot of our people don't even know that. We sin against God when we call them the Jews. Because the word Judah, Joel, what does the word Judah mean? Judah is um, basically the descendants of Jacob. Yes, but what does, what does the name mean? Prince. No, it doesn't mean prince. Israel means prince of the power with God. 
The word Judah means praise of God. I said, uh, I said praise, praise. Oh, praise. you said praise. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought you said prince. I thought you no, said, no, I said like, uh, uh, the son of a king. Okay, I apologize. Uh, I said, yes, you're right. Yeah. It means praise of God. God. Praise yeah. of God. So when we call the white man a Jew, we're saying he is the praise of God. That is blasphemy. That's why Christ in the New Testament says that is blasphemy. But guess what? That's in the Old Testament as well. Get me that. Come on. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 19. Mm -hmm. And I scattered them among the heathen, mm -hmm. and they were dispersed through the countries mm -hmm. according to their way and according to their doings. So God said he scattered us amongst the heathen according to our ways. Why did God scatter us, Joel? We broke his commandments. Go ahead. According to their doings, I judged them. God said according to our works, according to our doings, he judged us. Read on. And when they entered into the heathen. And when we entered into the heathen, the heathen is the goyim, meaning the other nations. The way they call us goy. No, 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 no. We're not the goy. They're the goy. We're not the goy. The true goy is the white man calling himself a Jew. The true goy is the Chinese, the Arabs, the Japanese, the East Indians. We are the Israelites. We are not the goy. Come on. And when they entered into the heathen. Uh-huh. Whither they went, uh -huh. they profaned my name. You hear that? God said, when we went into the heathen, we profaned his name. Go ahead. When they said to them, these are the people of the Lord. When we call white people the Christians, we're calling them the people of the Lord. Because the word Christians means anointed ones. The word Christ means anointed. When we call white people the Christians, we're calling them the anointed ones. They are not the anointed ones. When we call the white man a Jew, we are defiling God's name because we're saying they are the praise of God. That is taking the Lord's name in vain. That is breaking one of the Ten Commandments. Get me that in Exodus. Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in lies. When we call the white man a Jew, Joel, we are taking Yahweh or Yahweh's name in vain. Because they are not God's praise. I'm looking at God's praise. You, Joel, are God's praise. The brother to your right is God's praise. The brother to your left is God's praise. That name belongs to us, not them. Read that. Exodus chapter 20, verse 7. This is Exodus 20, verse 7. We are still in the Torah. Go ahead. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. When we call them God's praise, Joel, we are taking his name in vain. Yes, we are. We might look at that. We might look at that as a small thing. God looks at that as a big thing. That is a big sin. God says, don't take his name in lies. When you call the white man a Jew, you are taking his name in lies. That's what the Bible says. OK, now let's get some more. There's some more. Go ahead, sir. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. You hear that? God said he's not going to hold them guiltless, Amalek, because they're Amalek, the sons of Esau. And they're not, and he's not going to take our people who reverence them as the real Jews either, okay? Punishment, judgment is going to come on our people who reverence them and follow their ways. Now, get me some, um, get me 68 real quick. So, Joel, you know that Moses is a black man because you said he was a second in command in Egypt. In Egypt are a black people. The, the original Egyptians come from the sons of Ham, or a Ham, right? So if Moses is from the tribe of Levi, what color is Judah? What color is Benjamin? What color is all the other brothers? What is their skin complexion, Joel? What do they look like? Oh, black. Obviously. Very good. So, Joel, you know this. Why are you guys following the so-called white man? Why are you guys looking up to him as the Jews? Why is that? Because many of the synagogues in Africa, we have we wear the, the Magin David, okay, which is not biblical, Joel. I got to tell you straight. It's not in the Torah. The white man gave us that, okay? Um, and it, we know it comes from Solomon, the seal of Solomon. When Solomon went off, he had many wives, a lot of Goyim wives. And then he started to worship their gods. And then God judged them by splitting the, the, the nation of Israel into two kingdoms, the northern king, southern kingdom and northern kingdom. We understand that. But later, during the late 1800s, 1900s, 
we started to when we started to look at the white man as God and we started to look at them as the real Jews, we started following the name, their name, their ways. Many of the synagogues in Africa, not only do you have the Magin David, you have the nine or tenth, ten branch menorah. That's not biblical. We wear the hats on our head. That's not biblical. That's not biblical. When you look in the Bible, the Bible has seven branches. This is the menorah right here. Seven. In some synagogues, they have nine or ten. We wear the little yarmulkes on our head like the white man in Israel. Those are not the Jews. Those are not the Jews. You and I are the Jews. The Bible, the Bible talks about all the prophets being black. So how could they come to you? How could they come to you now and say, oh, yeah, yeah, you guys are part of us. Uh, but you're not Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. You're Gad. Oh, no, you're Naphtali. Oh, no, you're Reuben. We see that. We see what's going on in America. They say that the Ethiopian, the Falashians, who, who say they are descendants of uh, Benai Ephraim, biblical Israel, they call them the Ten Tribes. They call you the Ten Tribes. They call the Lemba the Ten Tribes. But they in the land, or Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, come on, give me a break. That's a lie. That's a lie, Joel. You know it. That's why you're laughing. You know they're lying. There's no, there's no reason to follow their ways. The biblical descendants of the Israelites, you and I, they're all black. Zephaniah is black. Get me that, Zephaniah chapter 1. You know Zephaniah? You read the book of Zephaniah? In chapter 1, in the first couple of verses, what do you read? You read that Zephaniah's father was called what? Cush. Let's read it. Come on. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 1. Mm -hmm. The word of the Lord which came unto Zephaniah... The son of Cushi. The son of what? Cushi. They call the Ethiopians in Israel who they beat up. They beat them. They call the Ethiopians Cushi. In America, that's a derogatory term for us. It just means black. That's all it means. But it's no difference from them calling us nigger. Cushi. But Zephaniah's father was called Cushi. But we know Cush was one of the sons of Ham, which means black. Zephaniah is black. Now let's go. Because they say, oh, they're from the tribe of Benjamin, right, Joel? They say, yeah, we're Benjamin. You guys are not Benjamin. Okay, we'll accept you, Joel, but you're Naphtali. Let's see what Benjamin looked like. Get me the Shigayon of David, please. Psalm chapter 7. Psalms chapter 7, Joel. Come on. Shigayon of David. The Shigayon of David. Which he sang unto the Lord. Which he sang unto the Lord. Concerning the words of Cush the Benjamite. So what was Cush? The Benjamite. So this guy who was called Cush, he was a Benjamite. He was called black, like you and I. Why? Because he is black. Joel, he is black. So you have Benjamin and Levi black. Now let's get Judah. Everybody wants to be Judah, right? Judah's the, the foremost tribe that Mashiach is going to come from, right? Everybody wants to be Judah. So the white man, the white man's calling himself a Jew. Let's see. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 2. Come on. Judah morning. Mm -hmm. And the gates thereof languish. Come on. They are black uh -huh. unto the ground. You hear what it says? The, the tribe of Judah is in mourning and they are black unto the ground. Why did it say black unto the ground, Joel? Why does it say black unto the Why is Jeremiah making a comparison of the Jews like the ground? Let me show you. Genesis 2, verse 7. Come on. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So God formed Adam, the first man of the dust of the ground. The deeper you dig in the earth, Joel, the darker it gets. All right? Because the original man, Adam, was on the continent of Africa. Do you think he was in Europe? Adam wasn't made in Europe. He wasn't made in Germany. He was in a he was in a Ashka Nazi. Okay, he was in a he was in a Polak. He wasn't Russian. He was a black man, Joel. So Jeremiah said, "The Jews are like the dust of the ground." Get me Lamentations about their visage. Come on, Lamentation chapter four. Watch this. Let's get some more. And I'm staying in the Old Testament for a reason, Joel. I'm staying in the Old Testament for a reason, brother. Okay, come on, Lamentation chapter four, verse eight. Their visage is blacker than a coal. Jeremiah is talking about the Jews. Remember when Babylon came to Jerusalem and took us into slavery, it was only Judah, Benjamin, and Levi in the land. 
the northern kingdom was already scattered amongst the Assyrians. Okay, there is a, there was already in slavery. Babylon came up, came to us and took us. Jeremiah said their visage, meaning our faces, is what blacker than a coal. Blacker than a coal. He's talking about their faces, their appearance. Why, Joel? There was a famine in the land. The Babylonians under Nebuchadnezzar, they took away the food and water. So there was a famine. All right. During the time of famine, we get blacker. We get dark, like an ashy black. Jeremiah says they're blacker than a coal. So in order to be blacker than a coal, Joel, our original color had to be what? Dark black. Red. black people. That's us. And this is our book. Nobody else's. Psalms, um, Psalms 149, verse 17. This is our book. We cannot, the Tanakh, the Tanakh, the Bible, Joel, is not an all-inclusive book. It's not an yeah. all-inclusive book, okay? It's a book that was separate and wholly only given to us. And it's a hard pill for some of our brothers and sisters to swallow, especially in America. More in America than, well, you know what? That's hard to say. Because even in Africa, we get resistance that Yeshua ben David, ben Yosef, ben David, is a black man. When they see the there's white images of Jesus Christ all over the streets in Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, the stores, the barbershop, restaurants, the church, white images everywhere. We ask people, who's that? Jesus. Where in the Bible does it say Jesus was white? Oh, uh, I don't know. So why do you believe it? Oh, uh, well, uh, the white man told me. So I believe everything he says because he's God. Oh, it's not biblical. The white man has deceived the whole planet Earth. He's deceived you and I to think that he's the Jew. He's deceived you and I to think that he's God. Okay, now is the awakening before Mashiach comes back. Because when Mashiach comes back, Joel, he's not coming back to hand out candies. He's not coming back to hand out flowers. He's coming back to collect heads. That's what he's doing. When Christ comes back, when Mashiach comes back, he's coming back to collect heads. Many heads. The heads of our people who don't want to repent and the heads of the nations. Okay, And the white man is going to be destroyed. The ones in America and the ones on the Eastern Hemisphere, they're all going to be taken into slavery. OK, they're going to be our goyim slaves. And I got to speak like this. I got to speak plain. OK, it's too late in the game to sugarcoat stuff and to worry about people's emotions and feelings. All the white people, the so white, the white people that you follow as the Jews, guess what? They're going into slavery. Get me that. Get what, what Mashiach said. Revelation chapter two, verse nine and then three, verse nine. Watch this. This is what Mashiach. They don't read this in the church, Joel. They don't read this in the church, but we're going to read it. Read. Revelation chapter two, verse nine. Come on. I know thy works. And tribulation and poverty. Come on. But thou art rich. Mm -hmm. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. Christ says it's a blasphemy for them to call themselves Jews. Go ahead. But are the synagogue of Satan. God calls them the synagogue of Satan. Go to uh, chapter 3, verse 9. Behold, mm -hmm. I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Mm. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. You hear that? He said he's going to make them to come and worship before your feet. Come and worship before. These are not the people of God. I know right now, Joel, I'm not sure. I'm trying to read your body language. I, I, right now, I don't know if your soul is squirming inside or if your soul is rejoicing inside. It should be rejoicing. Because you three brothers, you are the sons and daughters of Israel. You are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. You are the real Jews. So your soul should be rejoicing. Because you know what? In their synagogues, you know what they teach? That we are going to become their goyim slaves. How do I know that? Because I've visited many of their synagogues. I've spoke to many of them. Okay? And what they're saying is biblical. It is biblical. But they think that they are the Jews and they are not. They are the synagogue of Satan. Now, as far as coming together, get me Zephaniah 2 verse 1. So what is the, the main purpose of the conversation today, Joel? Since you already know, you already know that the biblical Israelites are blacks. Now we need to come together on some common ground. And the only common ground is this. The only common ground is the Bible. 
Okay, Zephaniah 2, verse 1 from my brother Joel. Come on. Gather yourselves together. Mm -hmm. Yea, gather together. O nation not desired. God is commanding us to gather together, Joel. O nation not desired. We are the nation that's not desired. It's an undesirable thing for blacks to come together, especially in America. The nations hate it, and we have many blacks who hate it. They, they want an all-inclusive world. They want an all-inclusive Bible. The Bible is not all-inclusive. Even when you get to the New Testament, it's not all-inclusive. But we've been programmed to think that it's all-inclusive. We've been programmed to think, Joel, that the New Testament is contrary to the old. It's not contrary to, to the old. It's just the people who's been teaching us have been teaching us wrong. Okay? The Bible tells us to come together, gather together, read. O nation not desire. Come on. Before the decree bring forth. Before the decree bring forth, Joel. Come on. Before the day passes the chaff. You know what that's talking about? Before World War Three. Before Mashiach comes back, we have to get, we have to reunify. The 12 tribes must come back together as one and serve the Lord, our God, keeping his laws in the faith of Mashiach. That's what we have to do. Okay. So we have to, we must come together on common grounds. Okay. We have to come together and keep the commandments of God. Now, um, do you have any questions for me, Joe? I'm sure you have a lot of questions. I have some questions for you too, but I want you to go first because I've been doing all the talking. Basically, the majority of the things you've said are what, what we know already, and um, mm -hmm. are things that are the truths that we've come to find out. Mm -hmm. So I understood all you said. We understood all you said. Yes, sir. And it's part, and it's part of the things we've always wanted to advocate to people, mm. to the blacks and the around, for us mm. to realize who we are. Because over the years, we've lost our identity, and uh, we've we've we become a people who do not know who we are. So I really do not have much questions mm. for you. But mm. we can just continue the conversation. Okay. Um, okay. I, I yes. Go ahead. Sir. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so um, just like uh, he said, we we've actually known these things that you've been saying about uh, the blacks being the real Jews. We are very much aware of these things, and uh, but our stance is quite very clear. So we do not believe that the Mashiach has come. Mm -hmm. That is basically what we do not believe in that he has come or that he's going to come again. We believe that he will come because when we we were not promised a second coming, we are promised one. Mm -hmm. If you, start, if you start from, uh, you've quoted a whole lot of uh, scripture, which I very much I commend you for, and it's quite very, very understandable. But the very first place where I want to just make mention of is, this, is the statement of Jacob to his sons. Mm -hmm. He said to Judah, who is the person um, which uh, we, we, are, we, we are named after as Jews, based on uh, the, the current day uh, understanding. Mm -hmm. He said that unto him, unto Shiloh, shall be the gathering of the people. Mm -hmm. And of course, if if you would want to say that Yeshua mm -hmm. is the Messiah, mm -hmm. he never gathered anybody. You get the point. I understand very much where the mm -hmm. your opinion is coming from, and it's very, very clear. But he never gathered anybody, and there was no promise of the second coming. It was just one. We mm -hmm. shall be at the end of the world. That's basically where our own understanding and our own belief is at. And Yeshua is not the Messiah. Mm -hmm. That is where we are standing. That's mm -hmm. basically what I wanted to point out. Mm -hmm. So let me very much agree with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I very much agree with the fact that the blacks are the real Jews and uh, that our ancestors were blacks. Because of course, you know, just to add to 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 the points that you've made, the drawings in the caves in Egypt they very much depict all these things because the drawings depict black people and not white people. It's super super clear, and we know this already that these are very much black people. But our stance mm -hmm. is that Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Is not Christ and he is not the Messiah. That's basically it. Okay, okay, okay. Understood. So let me ask you let me ask you a question. Um, in the old covenant, the old Levitical covenant, what what did we have to do to uh repatriate for our sins? What were we under? What were we under? Like 
We're under a particular law, which which means that in order for you to be forgiven, you have to bring a lamb. It's going to be offered upon the spot sacrifice, or even a pigeon, or even different categories of a uh, of uh, mm -hmm. ways to make correction for your sins. Okay, so and, if, very much okay. and if we didn't do that, what happened? You just, you have broken the law. And what was the result of breaking the law? The result of breaking the law is that the person will face the consequences that is stipulated in the law, depending on what you have done. Yeah. So I cannot particularly tell you that this is the, what you're going, going to receive for this, or this is what you're going to receive for this. It depends mm -hmm. on what you have done that prompts mm -hmm. you to rectify it through the means that has been yeah. in the Torah. So the consequences of, of not keeping the sacrificial laws as a repatriation of sin is that your own blood had to be spilled meaning you had to be put to death. Um, there's been many, many um, periods of slavery that we went through that we weren't keeping the sacrificial laws. So that's why there was a need of a, mess a Messiah because you and I, we both were put in a position where we were raised, well, I can't necessarily say you because you guys were probably raised in what you believe in um, now. Your parents are also um, Israelites. They follow the customs as well. Yeah, sure. Okay. So if somebody, let's say, breaks the Sabbath or doesn't circumcise at the right time, how could they repatriate for their sins if there's no sacrifices going on now? Because the temple is not here, so you can't sacrifice in Nigeria or Abuja or Kenya or South Africa. How would you repatriate repatriate yourselves back to the Most High? Because there's no sacrifice going on now. So what do you guys do? Okay. Uh, God, Hashem, is a master plan. And... He plans the end from the beginning and plans the beginning from the end. Yeah. Absolutely. He knew, he knew a time would come when the temple would not be in existence. Because it is one of the things that the Messiah would do when he comes. He would establish the third and final temple where all nations, where the prophecy of Isaiah would now be fulfilled. Like it said, from one Shabbat to another, and from one new moon to another shall all flesh mm -hmm. come to worship before me. Mm -hmm. So, Hashem knows that a time will come when the altar would leave Jerusalem. Because he, it was due to the sins of his children, which led them into captivity and led to the first destruction of the temple by the Babylonians, the second destruction of the temple by the Romans mm -hmm. after the death of Yeshua. Okay. So Hashem knew that a time would come when the altar would be absent from Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. It does not now imply that when a child of the covenant commits a sin and according to the laws of Hashem when one commits a sin he is to offer a guilt or a sin offering according to the specifications in the Torah now if at this point there is no provision for that basically God knows about it Okay. Okay. All right. Get me uh Psalms 40 and verse 6. You said a whole lot there, Joel. You said a whole lot. You said Hashem Hashem creates, knows the ending from the beginning. You're absolutely right. That's a hundred percent. And that is biblical. That is biblical what you said. Um, some parts of what you said. Um as far as the sacrifices. As far as the sacrifices, the temple being gone, yes, that is biblical. But watch this. Psalm chapter 40, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice and offering mm -hmm. thou didst not mm -hmm. desire. Come on. 
Mine ears hast thou opened. Mm -hmm. Burnt offering and sin offering hast mm -hmm. thou not required. Mm -hmm. Then said I, mm -hmm. lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. So notice what it says here. Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. Now watch this. Give me Deuteronomy, the prophecy about Christ. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Because you know what? Amalek, the so-called white man calling himself a Jew, he says the same thing. That's why I said their doctrine has seeped into Africa in many of the synagogues to have you reject Mashiach, Yeshua, who the world calls Jesus the Christ, and follow after their thought pattern. They say the same thing. They say Mashiach uh, knows our hearts. The temple was destroyed. The Mashiach did not come already. When the Mashiach did come and he's coming back again, watch this. And like I said, when he comes back, brothers, he's not coming back to hand out candies, roses, and flowers. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. Mm -hmm. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren. Come on. Like unto thee, mm -hmm. and will put my words in his mouth, mm -hmm. and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Come on. And it shall come to pass mm -hmm. that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, mm -hmm. which he shall speak in mm -hmm. my name, mm -hmm. I will require it of him. You hear that? So who is this prophecy talking about, Joel? That prophecy is talking about Mashiach. But notice how it's worded. It's saying I'm going to raise up his. That's not talking about. That's not talking about Joshua. This is talking about Christ. Shall be raised from the tribe of Judah. Hear he him, and those who don't hear him, I'm going to require it at their mouth. So when is that time period? When is that time period that we have to listen to the words of Yeshua? That we have to follow after him because Yeshua is a walking em embodiment of the Torah. When he speaks, he speaks Torah. Where do we hear his words? We hear it in the Bible. We're hearing it now on this, on this program with you and I. God is saying those who reject him, read it again. And it shall come to pass mm -hmm. that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, mm -hmm. which he shall speak in my name, mm -hmm. I will require it of him. I will require it of him, meaning our brothers and sisters who reject the Messiah and his teachings, his Torah, is going to get put to death. But this is the prophecy of Christ. Now, let me read another one for you, Joel. Give me Micah 5, verse 2. Micah 5, verse 2. Because you said he's coming, but here's the issue with that. Jesus Christ is from the tribe of Judah, a black man. But the people in the land today of Israel are white. And, they're, and you have, they're saying that they're Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Now listen to this prophecy. Go ahead. Micah chapter 5 verse 2. Mm -hmm. But thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, mm -hmm. thou, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, mm -hmm. yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me. Mm -hmm. That is to be ruler in Israel. That should be ruler in Israel. Go ahead. Whose goings forth have been from of old, mm -hmm. from everlasting. Meaning he was prophesied from the beginning. Now here's the thing now. Here's the thing. Here's the thing now, Joel. In the land of Israel today is, is uh, the so-called white man, the fake Jews, Amalek, pretending to be us. They're saying they're Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. But the Bible says that the Mashiach is going to be born in the land of Bethlehem. So with your understanding that Mashiach did not come at all, he's coming in the future, which we do believe he's coming back. We believe he came already and he's coming back. You're saying that he didn't come already, but he is coming. But Micah, our forefather, said he's going to be born out of Bethlehem. Or are you saying that he's going to be born from the white people? Because the only people in Bethlehem today, Joel, are white people. So there's an issue there. There's a big problem there. The Bible okay. says he was born in Bethlehem already. But when we look in Bethlehem, it's only white people. Joel, help me out. Help me out here. Make me understand okay. what's going on. Okay. Before, before I answer this, Mm -hmm. I want to go back to the first thing we said. Mm -hmm. I skipped a vital information which we see in the book of Isaiah, chapter 19, verse 19, mm -hmm. which says, An altar, an altar of earth shall be in the midst of Egypt. I don't know if, you, if, if you've ever come across that scripture. Yes. Isaiah, chapter 19, verse 19. Now, talking... Isaiah chapter 19, verse 19, mm -hmm. talking about the 
altar of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Hashem already promised that an altar will be raised in the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And um, if you have probably heard or read about our organization, which is a community of Hashem worldwide, mm -hmm. I'm proud to say that we have an altar of sacrifice. Yeah. Where, whereupon we offer that which we are meant to offer. Mm -hmm. Yes, it will be arguable that the lineage of priesthood was given to Aaron and his descendants. But Hashem who promised, God who promised or said through the mouth of the prophet Isaiah that an altar will be raised in the midst of Egypt. He says in the midst of Egypt because at the time, Egypt was the best way to describe Africa. Egypt was the best way mm -hmm. to describe the continent of Africa. Mm -hmm. So when he says altar of earth in the midst of Egypt, now why was this altar needed? He said, in that Hashem, God, had the cry of his people. God heard the cry of his people in the land, which is what led to the erection of the altar in Egypt, in the midst of Egypt. So which we have one here in Nigeria, down in the eastern part of Nigeria, mm -hmm. in the state called Anambra State, mm -hmm. in village or in a town called Nobi. Mm -hmm. We have an altar of sacrifice erected not by our own volition but by the inspiration of God and thereupon we offer the sacrifices as stipulated in the Torah. Now down to the concept of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Now the first mention mm -hmm. The Messiah, or a person that will come and establish the kingdom of Israel forever, was in the blessings of Jacob to his son. Genesis chapter 49, verse 10. It says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Mm -hmm. now, I want to explain something here. The scepter here is not a physical structure a physical thing the scepter here depicts the Torah it says in when Jacob was blessing when Jacob was blessing his son Judah he said the scepter shall not depart from Judah mm -hmm. nor a law give her from his feet and unto him shall the gathering of his brethren be mm -hmm. until Chilo comes that was the first time Although they would, they might not have understood it then, but that was the first time God was telling his people mm -hmm. that there will be a time that someone will come from the tribe of Judah mm -hmm. that would establish his kingdom forever. Mm -hmm. Now, the second major place that we hear about the Messiah was in God's promise to David. When God established the kingdom of Israel or his people Israel, he gave them three major crowns. Mm -hmm. One, the crown of priesthood. Two, the crown of kingship. And three, the crown of the Torah, which is the law. Now, over the years, when Hashem chose Aaron and his sons, mm -hmm. the crown of priesthood was given to Aaron and his sons forever. Then the crown of kingship, every Israelite merited to be king until God chose David. So the crown of kingship, God gave to David and his descendants. Then the third crown, which is the crown of the Torah, which is the crown of the law, is given to every Israelite. That was why Apostle Paul was able to tell the Romans in Romans chapter 3, Verse 1, where he said, what advantage is there in being a Jew? Or what value is there in circumcision? 
much not of in every day, first of all, they have been entrusted the with the world. very words of God. So that is the benefits or the first advantage or benefits of being a Jew in that we have been entrusted with the Torah. Now, the promise of the Messiah was given to one man, David, through the king, through the people of Israel. In um, 2 Samuel 7, 7 verse 12. Mm -hmm. 2 Samuel 7, verse 12. God told David that I will set your seed after you, which will establish your kingdom right. forever. Mm -hmm. And he shall build me a house. You need to take particular attention to these statements. Absolutely. I will set your seed after you. Let's just let's just read for, for better clarity. You, you want to read it? You want to read it or you want me to read it? No, just okay, I can read, don't worry. All right. I want Genesis 3:15. Then I want to do the round of 28. Uh, Second Samuel seven stuff. Yeah, second Samuel seven verse twelve. It says, And when thy days be fulfilled, and thou shalt speak with thy fathers, I will set up thy king after thee, which shall proceed out of thy borders, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom mm -hmm. forever. Yes, and that's going to happen. This was the first major promise mm -hmm. of the Meshach. Mm -hmm. Now, throughout the scripture, throughout the pages of the scripture, there are six things that it was said that the Messiah would do when he comes. We'll go through them one by one. Mm -hmm. It said, the Messiah must be from the tribe of Judah, mm -hmm. a descendant of King David. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where the first issue, or the first, what word do I use? Uh, the first the controversy. The first controversy comes in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeshua, the son of Joseph. Now, there are two major genealogies about Yeshua in the Bible. Mm -hmm. One in the book of Matthew mm -hmm. and one in the book of Luke. Mm -hmm. Now, God told David, Hashem told David, that this seed that I will set, before I, before I go for that, we, we, we both believe that the concept of immaculate conception is a lie. Am I right? Absolutely. Thank you. Now, which is where the Christians get it very wrong. Yes. Now, if we obviously have the same stance that the concept of immaculate conception is a lie, mm -hmm. then it would leave us to actually getting the actual lineage of the man we call Yeshua. Now, I will say something first before I go on. Mm -hmm. The community of Hashem worldwide, as an organization, we believe in Yeshua. But Two things. One, we do not believe that he is God, which we have both established. Then secondly, we do not believe that he is the Messiah. Messiah. We're not, we not saying we do not believe in it because of what we want, what we choose to believe, but what the scripture tells us. Like I said, Daniel. he said that the, the Messiah must be a direct descendant of David, mm -hmm. a direct descendant of David. Now, if we look at the genealogy of mm -hmm. Yeshua in the book of Matthew, if we look at the genealogy of Yeshua in the book of Matthew, we see a lot of discrepancies from that genealogy with the genealogy in the book of Luke. 
there are a lot of discrepancies because facts, some of the names we see in the book of Matthew are not in the book of Luke, which begins to question the actual lineage of Yahshua. Although the book of First Chronicles chapter 6, am I right? Mm -hmm. First Chronicles chapter 6 gives us the lineage of kings from David to Solomon, down to Rehoboam, down to the last king who was um before they left, before they went into captivity in Babylon. It's Joachim also. Yeah, Joachim. Now, if his lineage is not authentic, because a king does not adopt his own and make him a king. If you look at the genealogy in the book of Luke, he said David gave birth to Nathan. Mm -hmm. And Nathan gave birth to someone else. But from the scriptures in First Samuel, I think, David had 20 sons. 20 sons. Mm -hmm. And none of them was called Nathan. And the son to whom was given the mantle of leadership was Solomon. So if any other lineage apart mm -hmm. from Solomon leads to Yahshua, mm -hmm. then that lineage is false. That's one. Secondly, mm -hmm. the second thing that the Messiah was promised to do was to gather the Jews in exile. That's what we've read in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 3, Isaiah chapter 11, 11 and 12, Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 3, Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 37, Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 17, and Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 24. Now, in the short 33 years that Yeshua was on earth, he did not gather the lost Jews or the lost tribes of Israel. Because up to date, they are still scattered everywhere across the world, just like we said in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. Hashem told them, God told them that if you disobey me, I will scatter you unto all the nations. Yeshua came and lived for 33 years and did not in this time gather the Jews in exile. Now, down to the third, mm -hmm. it says the, the temple in Jerusalem will mm -hmm. rebuild. That is one of the things the Messiah was said that he would do when he comes. Mm -hmm. You can see this in the book of Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. Isaiah chapter 56, verse 6 and 7. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel chapter 37, 26 and 27, Malachi chapter 3, verse 4, mm -hmm. and finally Zechariah chapter 14, verse mm -hmm. 20, 21. Mm -hmm. Not only to mention when Yeshua was alive, the oh, temple yeah. in Jerusalem was still standing. Mm -hmm. How do we know this? When Yeshua healed the leper, he told him, mm -hmm. Go to and show yourself to the priests and offer the gift which was written in the law of Moses. We know this is not a gift mm -hmm. in particular. We're talking about what? Oh, sacrifice. the, the sacrifices that follows when someone who has a skin disease is healed from his skin disease. Mm -hmm. Look of uh, Leviticus. Sacrifices. Hashem said that when one has a skin mm -hmm. disease, after the period of his skin disease is passed, he will go to show himself mm -hmm. to the priest will who will him. confirm him that yes, yes indeed, he is clean. And he would offer a particular sacrifice as stipulated in the Torah. So this is how we know that when Yahshua was alive, the temple in Jerusalem was still standing. He was lost yeah. even in the temple. He was lost even in the temple as, okay. at the age of 12 when his friends came to look for him mm -hmm. and they saw him now among the scribes and the Pharisees and teaching people selling in the temple. And mm. flogged also flogged people who were selling in the temple. So this gives us 
an insight that when Yahshua was alive, mm -hmm. the temple was in service. Was in service. Remember what mm -hmm. God told David. Mm -hmm. Let us go back to what God told David. He mm -hmm. said, I will set a seed after you. Mm -hmm. And he shall build a house for my name. Mm -hmm. Which means that when the seed comes, he will build a temple that will stand forever. Mm. Now, Joel, you, hold on. Yeah. Not not to okay. cut you off, because you said a whole you said a whole lot. So yeah. Um, I I don't even think I'm gonna have time to address every point. Uh, because right. we are 22 minutes over the cutoff time. However, I'm gonna try right. my best to address some points. Um, the part about um he shall come and build a house for my name which shall last yeah. forever if i go into that that's gonna go way over your head it's gonna go way over your head uh first and foremost um the first prophecy of christ of yeshua did not come in genesis the 49th chapter it actually came in genesis chapter 3 verse 15. so i wanted to correct you with that that was the first prophecy of mashiach now when you go to the words of our forefather daniel Listen to what Daniel said. Give me uh, the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 25. Know, therefore, and understand mm -hmm. that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem mm -hmm. unto the Messiah. So the going forth of the commandment to go and build Jerusalem was joined what time period? That was joined the Persian and Medes when Cyrus gave the, the Israelites the, the, uh, the liberty to go back and restore and build Jerusalem. The walls, the gates, and the temple. Go ahead. The, the to, to, to build Jerusalem unto what? Unto the Messiah. Unto the what? The Messiah. The who? The Messiah. Read on. The prince shall be seven weeks. Come on. And three score and two weeks. Come on. The street shall be built again. Read on. And the wall even in troublous times. Go ahead. And after three score and two weeks. Come on. Shall Messiah be cut off. Uh huh. But not for himself. Go ahead. It and says so the Mashiach shall be cut off. The Messiah shall what? die mashiach shall be cut off and die that's what the forefather daniel understood the forefather daniel is wiser than you and i go ahead come on but not for himself not for himself because christ the mashiach died for our sins too he died for our sins that's why um Isaiah, the prophecy said that he would be chastised with the rod of men and he would take on our infirmities, our sins. Christ is the Lamb of God that takes away our sins. All that sacrifice and stuff that you guys are doing, whether it's in Egypt, Turkey, Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, it's in vain. The sacrificial laws are done away with. Christ done away with that. That's why in the book of Psalms by the mighty King David said, a body has thou prepared me, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. The whole thing about the sacrifice was to usher in Jesus Christ. That was the whole plan of sacrifice. That's what the uh, um, our brothers and sisters today cannot understand. I'm talking about our brothers and sisters who are following after the so-called white man calling himself a Jew. But in the book of Daniel, it tells you that the Mashiach would be cut off and die. So either so the, read the, read in the book of Daniel, this is Daniel, the ninth chapter. When you read from the 25 on down, 9 verse 25 on down. So that means Daniel is a liar. And we know Daniel's not a liar. So somebody, somebody has the wrong understanding. Somebody has the wrong understanding. And I believe as our brothers and sisters who are in these synagogues, who are still sacrificing bulls and goats and turtle doves and taking money and flushing it down the toilet like the white man does every Yom Kippur in America. He prays to the dollar bill and he flushes it down the toilet and he says, oh, I prayed my sins into the money. That's all a lie. We need a Messiah because when we was in Babylon, we couldn't sacrifice. When we was in the Persian Medes, we couldn't sacrifice. When we was in Assyria, we couldn't sacrifice. When Rome, even when Rome was here and we were scattered after 70 AD, we could not sacrifice. So if we committed adultery, if we committed uh, breaking the Sabbath, idolatry, all of us would be put to death. You and I would cease to exist because we've committed sins that were worthy of death. The Messiah's blood and flesh is the only thing that repatriates our sins, not the sacrificing of goats, because our brothers in Haiti are not sacrificing goats. 
Our brothers in Jamaica are not sacrificing goats. Daniel said, read it again. Come on. Verse 26. Mm -hmm. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, mm -hmm. but not for himself. Come on. And the people of the prince mm -hmm. that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Come on. And the end thereof shall be with a flood. Uh -huh. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. So after Christ died in 33 AD, Joel, 30 years later, about 30 something years later, you had the desolation of the temple. OK, the uh, by the, abom the, the the abominable that make it death desolate, which is the so-called white man. And not only did they do this during the time of the Greeks, Joel, but during the time of Rome under Titus and Vespasian, they destroyed us and we were scattered. Daniel was giving you the prophecy about Mashiach. I love to I have to pronounce it like that. Mashiach being cut and off and die. So that means Daniel doesn't know what the hell he was talking about. Because Daniel is talking about the Messiah coming and dying. Now, as far as the gathering that you mentioned, that's going to happen when Christ return and he gathers his elect. Not all of us, because some of us are going to die. The ones that break Torah, the ones that refuse to repent, and also the ones that forsake him, who don't believe in him. Okay? The one that believes, no, the white man is God. We don't want you. We want the white man. Guess what? They're going to die when Christ comes back. Watch this. Get me Daniel. Stay in Daniel. Get me Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. You heard about the dream, right, Joel? The dream yeah, that Nebuchadnezzar had? Watch this. Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. Come on. And in the days of these kings mm -hmm. shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom mm -hmm. which shall never be destroyed. So prior to that, you read about the um the the, the feet, the, the, the calf and the feet. That was going into Rome. When you read about the toes, that's going into America. Right, when you read right, about yeah. when you read about the ten toes, that's going into the ten common markets or NATO, the ten common markets. So right, the EU. Okay, Christ is is prophesied that the Mashiach would return during this captivity that we're in now and set up His kingdom. Read on, which shall never be destroyed, mm -hmm. and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Mm -hmm. But it shall break in pieces and consume mm -hmm. all these kingdoms, mm -hmm. and it shall stand forever. So, and and then, oh, it's our what? Stand forever. So that promise to um David, where it says he shall set up my kingdom and shall be forever. Read it again. What Daniel said, unless Daniel's a liar. Read it. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kings. So the kings of Africa got to remove their crown. America is going to be blown away. America is going to be that lake of fire, thermonuclear fire. Um, um, Vladimir Putin of Russia, he got to give up his crown. The Mashiach is taking all crowns. Okay, he's going to be the supreme ruler on this earth. And it says that he's going to rule. The kingdom is going to stand forever. So the kingdom that's going to stand forever, my brother Joel, is when Mashiach Ben David comes back in return. Why? Because it said that the Messiah shall cut off and die and shall return. Remember what Moses prophesied, Joel, in the book of Deuteronomy 28, verse 49. Remember what Moses prophesied. Moses prophesied about Titus and Vespasian and Rome coming to Jerusalem, destroying us, destroying the temple and taking us into slavery. That had to happen. Christ could not stop the prophecies from being fulfilled. They had to play themselves out. They had to play themselves out, but we have to have faith in him that he is the Messiah and his purpose was to repatriate, repatriate us, us of our sins and bring us closer to the Most High, be a mediator between us and God for our sins. He could not stop the prophecies from being fulfilled. Christ himself spoke about 70 AD, okay? And you have those Pharisees and scribes, remember? Let me repeat what I'm about to say now. You had the Pharisees and scribes, Joel, who rejected Mashiach when he came of old. And guess what? Those same Pharisees and scribes are here today. They know that they are the Israelites and they will still reject Jesus to Christ. Okay? But we're going to end it on that because I am 30 minutes over. I have an appointment to go to. All, all right, right. All right. Um, we, Joel, I want to keep in contact with you. Brothers, okay. realize this is love. This is not hatred. We love you, brothers. Yeah, so, we so. just speak firm because we're black men. This is how we speak. We don't speak. So, oh, oh, Joel, love me. No, 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 no. We don't speak like that. Okay? We understand that. Yeah, we, know, we know that. Uh, 
We love you, brothers. We really want to unite with you, brothers. With unity, there's power, but we have to come together on common grounds. All right, we're gonna we're gonna keep in contact with you. We have your phone numbers, okay, brothers? All right. All right. Shalom. 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 Thank you very much. Nation is men leading by example. Family.